Hello everybody, Corey here. In this video, I'm going to go over the Ulti uh, Trades and Holdings for July 17th. <clears throat> just a reminder, I'm not a qualified licensed investment or financial advisor. I just gather the data presented it to you uh, so you don't have to. Uh, yield max ETFs are extremely risky. Make sure that you understand the risk involved in these. You have read the prospectus um, before investing in these. All right, so I clearly did not set these up, but here we go. It's not too bad. All right, so um, we do have, so these are in alphabetical order right now. We do have two new ones today. Here, let me just look real quick. Uh, Rivian, which I don't think Rivian's been in this portfolio before. Of course, we've had Robin Hood, uh, but those are our two new ones here. Um, and if you don't know Rivian, um, they make autos. Um, let's see. This should be look in that category real quick. Yeah, that is industry called automobiles. So there we go. Rivian Automotive. <clears throat> All right. So we have that one. And like I said, we have Robin Hood. And I think everybody here knows what Robin Hood is at this point. Let me sort this so we can look to see. We have five ETFs that are over 100% IV. We have HUT 8, ENBX, Hims and Hers, Space Mobile, and Reddit. Um, and then we have at the bottom at 54%, we have AMD. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at the individual stocks overall today. Uh, well, Ulti actually went up 10 cents, which is 0.7%, and the S&P was up 0.64%. And I don't have it on here, but I think the NASDAQ was only up 0.06%. Um, so a little bit everywhere there. But we can see here most of this portfolio was green. Um, we have Reddit and ELF. They were down 3%. SMCI uh, down 2 and then, wow, we just have so many greens here. We have Sunrun up 10%, Mara up 9%, Wayfair up 7%, Hut 8 up 5 uh, Micro, oh, I got off. Coinbase and AMSC, which now I have forgotten. Oh, that's American uh, Superconductors. Those are up 4%. I mean, we have a lot here. Uh, green, which is great. I mean, you would hope that with having this much up that we would win up more than 10 cents, but it's all good. Um, and then, of course, the distributions were announced. Um, so it was like 99 cents, so it'd be down uh, about 4 o'clock in the morning when the pre-market opens. Um, it should be a dollar thirteen forty is what it should open up at. Of course, that doesn't mean it will be at that at 9.30. Uh, I know sometimes people get confused with that. But um, anyway, let's look over here. Of course, we have the trades for the day. We have the the, the roll-up anyway. Uh, Rivian and Hood, of course, those are new for the week. And then Mara, um, just some changes there on the short calls. And then we have our net assets over here. And I, th I th thought it odd, but let's just... So we're actually going to have a couple of these over $10 million here. Um, and since I didn't do the video yesterday, uh, honestly, I just got home yesterday. And uh, yeah, there was just no way I was going to be able to stay up late enough to, to do a video. Do I have it? Okay, I already did it. Um, or impossible, probably wouldn't even been able to make it, uh, even if I got all the data done last night, I wouldn't have been able to do the video, there's just no way. Um, of course, I have the data, uh, I just got to put it here in this workbook. 
but uh, the main thing will be tomorrow when things reset set for this next month. Uh, I'll get the data in there. It's just in the other workbook I have. Um, but you can see here, let's look and see what our average is. So we're looking at about two point, I mean nine point two five million dollars on average here for these this week. So we're going up. So to look at the trades here real quick. Uh, well, one thing I didn't do is sort these by the stock. Um, when I copied them over, apologize there. But you can see here, basically they bought the. Robin Hood, I mean Robin, yeah, Robin Hood and Ruby in stock, and then we have the short calls that go with those. I'll go over it on the other tab, and then we have a closed one here, which is Mara. We have the, um, which is odd because today is the 17th, the 16th, sorry. So these are for this week, so I don't know. Okay, so the stock closed at 2672 today, so that's why they did this, but. I don't know if this is for this week. I mean, it obviously it says it expires this Friday, and it is only Tuesday, so I guess that could make sense, but you would have thought they would have pushed it out to next week. Um, but, yeah, so they pay over a million dollars to close those out. Uh, well, consolidated a million dollars to close those out. Um, and then... Uh, put on a, the position for the other position. I started to say next week, but no, as a, let's see, let's just double check here. So Tesla. So according to our holdings here, it looks like Tesla is the only one that has, and then, so here's the other thing. I was looking at this. Tesla is the, um, only one that has expiration date for next week. And here's the issue is that last night, you know, the one night ever has ever, ever, ever happened. And I, I really didn't want to get up last night. And then I thought I should get up and save the holdings. So at least I would have the holdings. And then I got up, it was like 816. And I went in there and all of my stuff had already updated with the new holdings. It's never happened before. So of course, it hadn't right because um, I needed the data. Um, but anyway, so it already had overwritten uh, when I had done this. And actually, that's. Sorry, I'm thinking, and I actually do have the one for today, not yesterday's, but it's going to be in this one. I just failed to name it properly. And the reason I'm going to look, because Billy Billy uh, is in there, is still not having a short call. Um, so... Everything, but this was the only reason I have this column red is because that data doesn't match the day. Of course, I need to unhide this data. I don't have the end of Friday. After Friday, um, well, Saturday, we had to check out the condo, and then we moved to a hotel for a night, and then we traveled back, and then I never got around to saving it, like I said, but until before last night, uh, before the data changed over. The quickest in history it's ever changed over in these spreadsheets, of course. But, yeah, I just... don't here we'll go back over 
here because this other one I'm going to look at I'm pretty sure that I have in the workbook and I meant to look on this before I did the video apologize I know I'm a little unorganized here but what was I going to do I was going to look at the 12th course it'll take these a minute because I haven't gone on these but um, yeah so but actually last week it shows we only had 495,000 shares And right now we're showing we have 588,000. Of course, I don't have all the trades in here because, like I said, I'm still um, working on these. In fact, I have the data here. Today I was trying to... There's lots of manual labor I have to do now with these spreadsheets. And the fact that I did not... Um, they didn't import from this website. I actually had to download the file. So then I really have to do a lot of manipulating when I do it. Um, but I didn't finish these. But I still have the data. So this is the data from Friday. Yeah, and I don't have any transactions here on the Billy. And then let's look at this one. Okay, this might be it. Had to Google the the number. Yeah. So it does show that they did purchase more stock here, the ninety two thousand three hundred. Um but I do not see the short call here. All right. I started running into errors. All right, so I'm not sure why, what's going on with it. Um, I don't know that there's anything special either. Looking this up, the stock was only up a one and a half percent today. I just look here. Oh, so. Friday, the stock really, really dropped, and then it was dropped even more on Monday. So, I don't know. Maybe they're waiting to see if it's going to drop more. It's just that they've never done that before. So, I don't, you know, I'm not, I can't, I just don't know why. But they were, I can tell you that. They closed last Thursday at 1748. And then, yeah, there's, it's only, I mean, yeah, they dropped a lot. It looks like a lot on the chart, but it's only like a dollar thirty or something. So it's not a significant amount. So I'm not really sure here. Sorry, I did mean to look that up beforehand and then I had forgotten. I was waiting on the holdings to finish downloading for the the other stuff and then just figured, well, let me go ahead and knock this video out. But I think that was the only one that I just saw like an issue fairly quickly. All right, so um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't, you know, checked all of these numbers to make sure they're all right or anything. 
that other one and just happen to, you know, be able to easily identify that there was an issue there. But we have uh, AMD. We have a $190 strike price. And again, all of these are going to expire on Friday with the exception of the one uh, for Tesla there. But we have the 190 strike price, and we're currently uh, underneath that 7%. And this was up to like 184 or something last week. I'm not sure what happened, but now we're down to uh, at close today 177. So it did actually go down. Um, then we have the American Superconductor. We have two strike prices here. We have a $29 and a $33. And as you can see, today we actually closed up 4% at 3242. So we are now 12% above the $29 strike price, um, which is where the majority of the contracts are. So Right now, it shows today, if we close that out, that it would cost almost $1.1 million. Then we have ARM here with strike prices of $190 and $192.50. We're underneath those 6 and 7%. Then we have Space Mobile with a $1,350 and $1,450 uh, strike prices. We're currently at $1,371, so we're above the one strike price, 2% or $0.21. Cents. And then we are 5% below the $14.50 strike price. And then, of course, we just looked for Billy here. We have 588,000 shares. But um, we're not showing that there are any short calls to go along with those shares. Sorry, I was looking at the top. Uh, in case you wonder uh, here, the reason that this is showing a difference, that big of a difference between the current stock price and the NAV is because the NAV is already accounting for um, the stock dropping for the distribution amount. Um, so just just know that. So we have a coin here with a short call of 250 strike price. We are currently over that strike price 1% or $1.49 because it did come up 4% today. Then we have Carvana with three different strike prices. Um, we have a 140, 143, and a 150 strike price. Um, we did close today at 145.03, so we're over uh, those the 140 by 4%. The 143, 1%, and we're under the 153%. Of course, the majority of the contracts are sitting at that 143, then the 140, then the 150. So to close these out um, today, it would cost us about almost $400,000 to close those out. So we have one, two, three, we have four of these over. Now, take it, we've had a good few green days, um, but we have four so far over. Then we have Elf here with a 210 and a 220 strike price. This one's actually gone down um, today, so we are below these 10 and 14%. Then we have ENVX. Um, and I open this because I always reference it by the ticker, and that's because I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I could just guess and say it's Innovix, but I'm not totally sure. Uh, and I just don't know how many people here are new watching. Uh, so I just thought I would show that to you there. Uh, but here we have the $19 and the 1950 strike price. We're underneath that. The, uh, those strike prices four and six percent. Then we have Hems and Hers with a strike price of twenty three dollars. Uh, we're over that by eleven cents. Um, and then we have Robin Hood here with the twenty five fifty strike price, and we are currently three percent below that, which is less than a dollar. Then we have Hut Eight. With the 1850 strike price, but we're over that by 13% or two dollars and forty-three cents. 
And then we have Mara here with a $26 strike price. We're over that 3% or 72 cents. Wow, it came up 9% today. And then we have Micro Strategy here with a $1,500 strike price. We're currently over that 11% um, with the with the current stock price of $1,664. Now, I've heard today, uh, listening to my podcast things, talking about micro strategies going up because, and Bitcoin's going up because of Trump and the whole thing that happened this weekend. Couldn't tell you if that is correct or not. That's just what I heard being said today. Um, so that could be why, if that is the case, it could be why, you know, Mars going up and HUD 8 uh, and some of these others. But then we have um, Reddit here. We have a $83 and a $84 strike price. We are under those 15 and 16%. Uh, they only dropped 3% today. So I'm guessing they dropped a bunch yesterday. I'm not quite sure there. And then we have Rivian here with a 1950 strike price. We're currently underneath that 8%. Then we have Sunrun with two strike prices. We have a sixteen fifty and a seventeen. Of course, we're at seventeen twenty eight, so we are above both of those. Uh, the first one seventy eight cents, which is which is the majority of our contracts. Um, and then we have um, the seventeen dollar strike price. We're over two percent, or twenty eight cents. Then we have SMCI with a $980 strike price. Uh, we are underneath that 11%. Tesla, this one's uh, been down a little bit. I know it, I think it did get up to like 270 something last week or whatever. Um, but our strike price, our strike price for that's going to expire this Friday is $277.50. And then we have a strike price. Uh, a short call that's going to expire the week after, which is two sixty seven fifty, and we're currently underneath those eight and four percent. The majority of the contracts, which is three hundred seventeen, are sitting at that two sixty seven fifty strike price, and so we're about underneath that about eleven dollars. Then we have VST, which is Vistra. Um, we have a $92 and a $96 strike price. We're underneath those 7 and 11%. And then we have Wayfair, uh, $58 strike and a $61 strike. Uh, we're underneath those 1 and 6%. At least the majority of them are sitting, um, at the $61 strike price. So that's good. So now, I'm going to be honest with you, I lost count of how many. I, would I think I was somewhere around eight on how many tickers we had above it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So right now we have nine uh, tickers above their strike prices. So, I don't know how the rest of the week will go. It's only Tuesday. I know we've been going up for a few days uh, market-wise or whatever, so not sure how that will go for the rest of the week um, as we continue earnings for this quarter. Um, but anyway, I will let y'all go. Sorry this one was just so choppy. Uh, just trying to get back in to this and uh, get everything situated uh, when you when you miss a day, which is what I ha what happened here, I missed Friday, even though I did last week's. Then I missed doing Fridays, and then yesterday, um, yeah, I just I couldn't get myself to do it. So then I missed Monday too. So missing missing a Monday on this, and you know, and a Friday even, uh, especially for Ulti, can put um, you know be a little bit off because you don't know where th what things you know what happened and everything yeah I had the trades and everything but I haven't actually gone through them and really you know looked at them and stuff I just have the data um, in my workbooks but anyway um, I appreciate uh, all of you 
just so you know, I don't have any more vacations coming up. I plan to be home. I may be doing, you know, I'll have regular work and military work, um, uh, but I won't be having any, like, uh, huge vacations for the rest of the year. Usually I do in October, the first week of uh, October is at my daughter's fall break, but this year it does not fall on the week um, that my husband's off, so we won't be doing anything. Whew, so I can get back to the norm. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you guys, and um, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.